Hello and welcome back to the Hobbycast, the show where you and I share our hobbies with you, the internet. So a couple days ago, there was a Pokemon announcement of two sets of new games. There was Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and Pokemon Legends Arceus. So we're just going to be sharing our thoughts and opinions, hopes and predictions for these new games. So Ewan, which ones should we start with? Let's start with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So I think if this was the only thing being released, I'd have to say I would be disappointed just because it doesn't seem like they're trying anything new. Mm -hmm. It does seem to be just like a one one like faithful remake of the the old games that we all know and love but just you know it's on the switch it's hd um but i am looking forward to it i would say just because you know i i just want to be able to play those games on the switch Mm -hmm. i'm kind of on the fence about it because Mm -hmm. while i know everyone was kind of hoping for this huge big you know new expansive kind of sword and Mm shield-esque version of the diamond and pearl games i'm kind of pleased with what we have got because it allows even though the titles aren't being developed by Game Freak, it mm. allows Game Freak time to develop yeah. this new game they're working on, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Mm. But I think in terms of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, I am pleased in in the aspect that we get to play these games like as they were back in the day, but in a new like HD remaster kind of thing. So I think it's going to be all right. Mm. Mm. You wanted Pokemon Let's Go Sinner though, didn't you? Over, would you say that's what you still want? Well, I think I would have been happy with Let's Go Sinnoh, but what I really wanted was like, kind of like a faithful Diamond and Pearl remake in the style of Let's Go, like the Mm. actual visual art style and everything, but with the normal Pokemon mechanics, not the Let's Go, you know, throwing mechanics. See, I... I don't know whether I... I do like... I think the art style is interesting. It, it reminds me very much, I think everyone's saying this, of Link's Awakening, mm-hmm. that sort of like clay toy style. Yeah, like, I was thinking it did look very like plastic ass. Yeah, I think... But that, that's what kind of what Link's Awakening went for. I think they're trying to sort of like kind of go with that. But I, what, I think the one thing that I really like is that it's just like they're making a top-down Pokemon yeah. game again. Yeah. Like we haven't had that for so long. I feel like... It's so nostalgic to be able to play like that original game, but like a a bit of like modern freshness to it. What I'm really hoping for is just some of the platinum content. Like it doesn't have to happen in the main story. But one thing I was thinking was because Sword and Shield used DLC and that worked quite well, everyone seemed to enjoy the DLC. You know, obviously it sold really, really well. So Game Freak are probably going to use DLC in the future. What would be really, really cool was what, if like we could get... Platinum episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, like, after the post-game, maybe we could get a DLC pass that mm. allows us to go to the Distortion World, find and catch Giratina, maybe even go to the Flower yeah. Garden to catch Shaman, well, the Dark Cry, all that kind of stuff. That would be really cool. I think one thing that's interesting that I personally, I don't think a lot of people thought would happen, mm-hmm. is that they've just, like, ditched Sword and Shield. Like, in the sense that, like, we all thought, oh, they're going to have Dynamax. They're going to have G-Max. They're yeah. going to continue the style of Sword and Shield. Like, I think it's, I think a lot of people did want that. But I, I, I think it's kind of cool that they've gone, right, no, we made Sword and Shield. Uh, we, we did, yeah, we did some different. DLC. Yeah. It, it, some things worked, some things didn't. But, you know, it's done. We're going to try something new, which which I think they've done. So I'm, I did not expect that at all. I think it would have been cool to have Diamond and Pearl recreated in the style of Sword and Shield. Because yeah. I thought, like, quite a lot of the Sword and Shield, like, cities and routes, they all look really, really good. I love the environments of all those locations. I don't like the wild area so much. And I know a lot of people wanted, like, a Sinnoh with, like... A wild area for yeah. like Mount Coronet or the Great Marsh or yeah, something, Marsh and I think that would have been a cool concept, but it, I think it would have been difficult to pull it off. Mm. So I'm glad that they've kind of done this whole back to basics approach, and I think it's going to work for what it is. It's going to be good to play those games again. Mm. I'm glad that they're looking forward to do something different rather than spending lots of time recreating an already existing game because it gives them more time to look forward to the future for like more Pokemon games. I think one of my favorite things about the original Diamond and Pearl was because it was the first game that had like so many legendaries. Mm -hmm. Like think about how many legends, obviously we got the box art ones, Dialga and Palkia, but we've Mm -hmm. got like Shaman, Heatran, Darkrai, Cresselia. uh, What else we got? Manaphy. Um, we got so many legendaries just in one game and and what I think would be really good to see in these remakes 
is if they make them accessible. Because a lot of the, like, for example, like, um, like Arceus, Shaman, Darkrai, they had like these events. And yeah. I, I hate getting a legendary by just downloading a code and you get the legendary. The I want to play part, and get that yeah, legendary. The best part about Gen 4 was the fact that the mythical Pokemon actually had their own in-game events. Yeah. Like I was saying earlier like about all catching. Of them did. Yeah, all like of them Dark did. Cry and Shaman. Yeah. Like there was such a great... that You would easily get like an hour of gameplay mm. when you got one of these events when you could go and actually battle the Pokemon yeah. and catch it instead of just going into a Pokemon center and just receiving it from yeah, that yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's like these are legendary Pokemon. You don't just want to... They need to have yeah. story behind yeah. them. Yeah. That's the whole, that's yeah, the whole exactly. thing. That makes them legendary. Like you, like Darkrai, I think was definitely my favorite. Mm -hmm. The fact that you went to sleep in a bed and then you like yeah. found your way into the dream world and you like caught him. That was, that was so cool. Because it's actually kind of interesting. Because like I'm pretty sure the last like in-game event they did for a mythical was Victini in Black and White. Yeah. that's the last one I remember. Yeah, yeah. and I really, that really would one. like to see a return to form for that kind of thing definitely. rather than just receiving the Pokemon like we yeah. had with like. Zarud in Sword and Shield yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. In terms of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, there's like I don't really have a huge amount to say about it just because at the end of the day, like I feel like we're we're pretty aware of what we're getting. You yeah. Know? We're we're getting an HD remake of Diamond and Pearl with possibly some extra platinum content. Yeah. But that but that's it. Like, you know, fr from the trailer I feel like the, we're not gonna have too many surprises, is what I'm saying. So I feel like, you know. We, I'm we definitely looking forward to playing it mm. and I think it's going to be a really, really good experience. Yeah. But I think a lot of Pokemon fans are looking to Legends Arceus to see what the next step for the franchise is going to be. Yeah. And I have a few things to say about that. So I suppose we can move on. To yeah, like, yeah I think we can now. move on to that game. That's the game I'm most excited for. Mm -hmm. So what are your initial thoughts on the game? Initial thoughts? I think it's a, a, a diamond in the rough. We like we don't know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we we were shown, or the only thing we know really is that it's a prequel to Diamond and Pearl. Yeah. It's an open world RPG element type game where you catch Pokemon in order to create the Sinnoh Pokedex. Mm -hmm. But I think it has a huge amount of potential. What they're doing is they're trying really, really hard to give Pokemon fans what they want mm. because Pokemon fans have been so vocal about the fact that they want to see this franchise yeah. turned into an open world game where you can go and explore a variety of different areas, catch Pokemon, you know, in the environments themselves. Mm. It's so cool to see an open world, but a lot of the environments all look pretty much the same they're yeah. quite bland I, a lot of grasslands the environmental variation of baiting sword and shield was really bad it was like grassland and then there was that one slightly desert location yeah um they did fix that in dlc which i, think... I was happy about but that is one thing i you know if you're going to have an open world pokemon game it need you need like grassland you need like a uh, like a like an arctic location yeah. like a mountainous region you if, if you're going to have this expansive world you need to show every single environmental variation the isle of armor and the crown tundra are really really good looking wild areas as they were in the dlc but there's still not a huge amount of like life to them while mm. they look a lot different you can go to a lot of different uh, places in them there's no real like world building because yeah. there's it's, it's quite little like actual in interactive stuff you can do in those locations like yeah there are like towns and villages or whatever mm -hmm. but there's no like story put into like talking about you know how these places were found and created etc etc mm. what i kind of like about the three different games snap remakes premakes mm -hmm. uh is that each of them has such a distinct art style like snap, very different snap is yeah. beautiful like uh, and then like diamond and pole is uh, the remakes are interesting, you know, retro feel, yeah. 3D, 2D, it kind of like, um, I, you know what I'd love if they made, I don't know if you've, if you've seen this game, Octopath Traveler is, it's this beautiful 2D sprite kind of game, but with mm -hmm. like 3D graphics. 3D elements. Yeah. yeah. If they did like this pixelated, like 2D Pokemon game with 3D elements. My oh. Pokemon dream is for them to, because in Gen 5, I, 
that's the best looking I think Pokemon has ever looked because it's taken this, you know, this retro game and evolved it to become sort of in the modern world but still Mm -hmm. kind of in the middle but like the sprites that they used in gen 5 the kind of 2d like quasi 3d it was Mm -hmm. it was such a distinctive really good look for the franchise because all the towns cities and routes and everything they actually really felt alive Mm -hmm. but they were still simplistic in a way that everybody likes pokemon for i think if they took gen 5 graphics and then made it like slightly more octopath traveler with like that 3d element it would be like the ultimate Pokemon. And obviously game. that's just a dream. I don't think that's ever gonna happen no, because Pokemon not. is never gonna regress from this whole three D yeah. thing that 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 they're developing with now. But that's personally what I would like to mm. see from the franchise. I think I think what's interesting about Nintendo is that it's like you don't go to Nintendo to play this ultra realistic yeah. type game. Like it's not like they don't produce games like The Last of Us where they like mm-hmm. motion cap people and like it's almost like you're watching like a film. Yeah. You play Nintendo games because of the art style, which is why I'm never hugely bothered. I know some people are, but I'm not hugely bothered by um like when people say like oh the trees don't look very like like <laughs> yeah. realistic in like in like open world Pokemon games and stuff like that. Because, like, I'm playing these games for, for the art style, for, like, the Pokemon. What Pokemon has done so well in the past is create these, like, regions that you can go and travel in your own will. But, like, they actually look, used to look really, really good. But now that Pokemon is trying to move forward and do 3D environments, in mm-hmm. Sword and Shield protect, uh, particularly, there was a huge disconnect from, like, the wild area and the rest of the game, yeah. I felt. And going back to Legends Arceus, I think while it's really cool to see this huge, big, expansive region, Mm -hmm. if that singular, like, village that Mm -hmm. they showed us is going to be the only, like, actual settlement in the game, that's going to be really, really disappointing because there's, it doesn't really feel like there's going to be much to it. Like, I know the objective of the game is to go and catch the Pokemon and make the original Sinnoh Pokedex, but if Mm -hmm. that's all you do in the yeah. game then i don't really know if i'm going to be satisfied by that and like i said at the start it's a diamond in the rough we, we don't know much about it i think one thing that game freak struggles with um or just pokemon in general like it, it is the biggest franchise of all time yeah you know like they they have a lot of pressure to just be constantly putting stuff out because the demand is there you know mm-hmm. people want to be having games every single year it, it's a business at the end of the day it works like a business but one thing that i'm happy about is that they've finally gone right okay you know we're making we're making multiple games a year we might as well get a new com- like a, another company in on it you know yeah. you can make the remakes with with our support yeah. and we're going to focus on what's supposed to be the main game that that comes out next mm-hmm. I, i'm really glad that they're doing and another thing that i'm glad about is that we we didn't get generation 9 because it's too honestly, soon it's for too soon Nine. sword and shield was the was the stepping stone for um legends arceus yeah and i think legends arceus is the stepping stone to make generation nine this like yeah this like peak pokemon game i think it's annoying that we've had to have these stepping stones because yeah. everyone wants like the next big thing now but i agree uh, like i agree with you and like yeah. it's necessary for these games to be like kind of incremental upgrades so we can finally get that you know amazing mm-hmm. pokemon game that everybody really wants mm-hmm. a couple of things i do have to say about legends arceus though like i really want there to be at least some element of story behind it because as yeah. i said earlier yeah. if you just run around catching pokemon like yeah that's fun that's a good like that's good gameplay but for me what i love about pokemon is like the story and Mm -hmm. characters and environments and everything so obviously arceus like features in the title on the box art whatever Mm -hmm. yeah but what is arceus actually going to be involved with because we haven't heard anything about that so far we don't know if he's going to be like a good guy and he's going to help you like shape the Sinnoh region Mm -hmm. or if he's going to be like a villain and you have to fight him at the end of the game in like like, this big boss battle or something And I really want uh, the game to kind of like take these different directions. Like maybe we can go into this huge deep cave and find Heatran or we can go to the three different Mm. lakes to catch the the, the lake Pokemon. I want like there to be enough stuff to do in the game so that it's going to be like fun to play for like the amount of hours that an actual full game needs. Mm -hmm. I think there's I think there's two things that I'd really love. First of all, I'd really love for there to be a lot of Easter eggs like where like you go to like like you said you go to the lakes and you're like oh this is what the lakes look yeah. because the whole point right because from the trailer 
I didn't, I, apart from Mount Coronet, which is like ma- like the main kind of like focal mm-hmm. point, you know, in Breath of the Wild where you walk out like, and it forces you to look at everything. One thing I thought was funny was the way they showed the actual, like, the, the environment mm. was so akin to how Breath of the yeah. Wild was shown when it came out. You know, in, in the first shot, like, the character is walking out and you see it zoom out and yeah. you see yeah. the whole yeah. over the mountains and everything, yeah. the expanse of terrain. One thing I will say is, like, the render distance is actually really, yeah, really good. good. Yeah. But I want it to stay consistent throughout the game because... Mm-hmm. I was saying this to you the other day, how a lot of the environments are kind of inconsistent because yeah. some some parts of the game, the grass looks really, really good. Yeah, Whereas in other others, parts, yeah. like especially in this part where it shows a lake, which I know looks it, a yeah. lot like to me, like it looks exactly like the Isle of Armour, mm. but like the grass yeah. is so it's terrible. so bad. Yeah. Like, yeah, I will agree on that. Uh, but yeah, there, there, there's a couple of things I hope for is that we I, from the trailer, I did not get, apart from Mount Coronet, that this is Sinnoh. I didn't. There, there was. There was no. There was yeah. no like. Oh, that's that's it, where like you go to do that, or that's where you literally go to do that. looks like they took the Breath of the Wild map and yeah. were like, let's put Pokemon in yeah. it. And it's funny because they've actually got uh, the same. There's a bridge where there's torches, and the torches are literally like the same from Breath of the Wild, like, yeah. like identical. But another thing, that it's an open world RPG, and they're really hammering in that it's like this. This obviously Pokemon's always been. A role-playing game mm-hmm. but they're really hammering it in that it's like this is there's loads of new rpg elements like you can see like yeah. crouching uh like rolling which was interesting i really like the sneak elements yeah. i think if they do it right it'll be really cool to see the ways you can like have to creep up to certain pokemon otherwise mm-hmm. you'll scare them away like yeah. as long as like the gameplay is like intuitive enough mm-hmm. and like you know feels good when you're playing it then i don't see like why it can't be a good game to play like it's something different mm-hmm. and maybe it's not the direction i want to see pokemon take at the moment because i kind of like like the classic pokemon games but i understand that everybody wants to see these huge big 3d mm-hmm. environments so as long as they do it right then there's yeah. no reason why it can't be good what what i really want is um you know when you're playing the the, the main thing about open world games Breath of the Wild, like The Witcher, Skyrim, it's mm. side quests. What they need is, for example, let's say like you're um, you're walking over to a bridge and there's an NPC and there's this NPC that's like, um, oh, there's uh, there's some like Torterra, like um, <laughs> blocking the road yeah, or something. Yeah, there's yeah. some Torterra like in this area which are causing a ruckus. Can you go over there and catch them mm-hmm. and calm them down? One game I really, really, really enjoyed that has a lot of side quests is Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time mm. because you go to so many different locations yeah. in that game and obviously you go to these locations to progress with the story but there are loads of like other little things you've got to do in those areas like you've got to catch all the chickens yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. running around the village or whatever. Like yeah. As long as Pokemon can create this world that feels like it's living, breathing, feels like there's stuff happening in it, then it will be good mm. because if they just create this huge expansive terrain where all you do is catch pokemon like i'm not going to enjoy it like i want to be able to go to different locations do mm. different things in order for it to feel entertaining yeah. to me at least it, it's about exploration you know it's and it's, world it's, building yeah, yeah, as and, well. yeah i was going to say that it's about exploration and world building you know you, you want this like world like you said to feel alive you want to you want to be like talking to npcs and doing quests and you want to be like you, you just want to explore this world, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? But if there's not, if from what the trailer shows, you know, that that that's not currently what we're looking at, maybe that is the stepping stone uh-huh. to something that eventually we will have. Obviously but, the game isn't complete. Yes. So we have to wait and see what we yeah. will get, but only time will oh, tell. I'm, I'm yeah. interested. It has captured my interest. There, there is so many different places that they could go with it. Personally, I want Pokemon games to continue in the traditional way that they have, but mm-hmm. I also I like I'm completely not against seeing new types of Pokemon games. I would like to see maybe two different forks in the franchise. Like you have your traditional Pokemon yeah. game and you have your Pokemon Legends game. Yeah. It'll be a really good way to keep everybody happy. I think I completely agree with that because I think that um, Pokemon needs two different types of games. It needs a a, a traditional structured game mm-hmm. where you go through routes and you, you do the yeah, ages, yeah, et yeah. cetera, et cetera. Need, I think sometimes Pokemon needs that structure, but at the same time, I would really like, you know, the open world game of like Legends Arceus where you do, you kind of do what you want. You it, the, the game is what, it, it, you know, you, you make, make the game. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. So I, but I'm really, which is why I'm glad, which is why I am so excited that Pokemon Diamond 
and Pearl are getting Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and we've got Legends Arceus because I think for once they've maybe listened to fans yeah. and gone, okay, we don't think we can at this point create a game which it's going to fully two. satisfy yeah. everyone because yeah. you know it's hard to give structure and freedom within the same game. So by giving a a faithful remake of the Diamond and Pearl games that we all know and love, but also giving us something fresh and new, I think, you know, I think Pokemon have done well. I, yeah. you know. There's some really, really good things to look forward to in the Pokemon franchise. We mm -hmm. are going to wrap things up for now yeah. because it's been a really, really long video. And yeah. again, we'd like to thank you so much if you've watched it this yeah. thank watched you so, so much. far. Obviously, leave a thumbs up, mm -hmm. share our thoughts. We do have a Pokemon giveaway going on at the moment. We're mm -hmm. giving away some trading card game products. Ewan, would you like to tell them what we're giving away? So we're giving an Elite Trainer Box. So these are Shining Face products, Elite Trainer Box, a Pikachu V Box, and a pin collection. Now, so, there's a video in the description. Yep. If you want to go down and click that, you can enter the giveaway. Mm -hmm. We're accepting entries until the 17th of March, 17th I of believe. March, yeah. So we'd really, really appreciate it if there. you could go down and obviously take a look and enter the giveaway. If you've enjoyed the video, then give it a like, you know, comment your thought down below because we'd be we really, really, really love to, hear, yeah. to see what you think, you know, whether it doesn't matter whether you agree with us or you don't like, just comment what you think about these games because not everyone wants the same thing out of Pokemon. So, you know, uh, comment down below, we'll reply to you as we always do, we'll engage. Um, and also we'd love it if you could subscribe. We've, we've hit, over a hundred subscribers yeah thank you fantastic. so much like honestly we know we made a giveaway to get subscribers but mm -hmm. we're obviously blown away by the support we mm -hmm. didn't really think we'd get that many subscribers yeah. we've literally doubled our sub count mm. in the space of a week so that's yeah. really really good progress we're really really pleased mm -hmm. thanks so much for yeah, subscribing thank you. if you have thanks so much for watching we really hope you've enjoyed this video and we yeah. really hope to see you soon with some mm -hmm. more pokemon content okay bye bye for now see ya, see ya.